Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and this is the headset for a Zybernaut MA4 wearable computer. So this is all part of Project uh, Zyberpunk, and as such, I'm trying to get this thing, as you see all the parts here, uh, I'm trying to get this thing uh, torn down so I can see exactly how it works and be able to try and either restore it or just turn it into something interesting. And that's kind of where we are right now. So this is the HMD. This is the head-mounted display. Uh, this part hooks onto this little headset here. Uh, we have a, uh, have a uh, what is it, a DC out. Interesting. DC out on this side and headphones on this side. A switch that I'm assuming goes from uh, left-handed to right-handed orientation. Um, looks like a big old heat sink right here. And then this is the screen that would actually project out onto a, uh, a translucent piece of acrylic that hangs off and it's supposed to simulate like a 15-inch monitor in, the, you know, in your field of vision. Um, I'm not entirely certain how all that is going to work on here. Uh, so, uh, as part of this whole thing, I just need to take this guy apart, see if I can get it to work, and then we'll go from there. Uh, so, before you actually do anything, you got to take it apart and see how it goes. So, that's what we're doing right here. So, we've already taken apart the main... Uh, system and uh, taking apart the main system, and so we're just taking apart this uh, headset side. This is kind of interesting here. I wonder if you can see. You can actually see where it was like it's been molded, like it's got fingerprints in it. That's very interesting. So somebody actually molded that. Um, these things were built in just very small quantities in the late 90s. This one in particular built in 1998. Um, so it's a 20-year-old platform um, that apparently ran Windows 98 and, you know, was supposed to be all, like, super mil-spec and it was supposed to be the brave new world, future of mobile computing um, in an era before everybody had a supercomputer in their pocket. So, just kind of an interesting little piece of computing history. Uh, just sort of an interesting um, stopgap, if you will, um, between the 90s and the teens of mobile computing. That came out, but the other one did not. Come on now. Oh boy, hi. Hello. Hello. What are you? So this is actually a little LCD, interestingly enough. I think it's an LCD. Yeah, it looks like an LCD with a backlight. This is very interesting. Very interesting. Yes, it's held together with tape. <laughs> Gosh. Really? Really, guys? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, held together with tape. Um, let's, okay, so that goes around there. That's that side of it. Oh boy, this is that, ugh, crusty, nasty. Oh, it's 20 year old scotch tape, so. Yeah, that looks like it's, yep, that is definitely a, uh, that's definitely a, a powerful backlight there. Oh, and there comes the rest of it. Big old heat sink right here. This must be the GPU, I think, um, probably underneath there. And then this guy. It's very neat. This is a Hitachi, um, LCD board. Hitachi backlit LCD. 
That's really cool. Like, I almost want to keep this thing. I almost want to keep it to see if I can get it to work on that bit. But that's, that's really kind of cool. Now, this part kind of is weird because it just twists. So it's just a lot of high tension right there. It doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of strain resistance, uh, strain relief. But uh, that's very interesting here. Go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and take this guy off just so it doesn't really get damaged. Okay, there you go. Okay, so here we have what appears to be the um, the display adapter board. Um, Hitachi, 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 Hitachi. Um, this is obviously a ground, or whatever that is. So let's just take that off. That's too big. The screwdriver's too big, so I'm going to have to go down for that. So before I do that, I'll go ahead and take these screws out. These little Phillips heads, little cross head screws. And if I can get this thing to work on the original display, that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. Worst case scenario is it's going to need uh, just a little LCD, um, you know, kind of a, a modern color LCD, because it doesn't look like it's color, obviously. Um, so that may be a change there. Let's go down just a little bit. This is a double zero. There we go. That's the right size. Lord, oh Lord, what I get myself into. Mm -hmm. Take the thing apart, he says. Sure, it'll be easy, he says. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. We got a little selector switch right here. Well, uh, potentiometer, and I assume that this is for brightness. Okay, that's for brightness. That's to select our orientation. Um, and that was... Headphones are on this side, and power on this side. I'm wondering about the power supply. Like, how does that work? Uh, I don't know. Ooh, uh oh, I don't want to lose my little slider switch. Let's stick that right there. This is a Shimadzu. Shimadzu. Okay. I have to look that up. Shimadzu. And again, the biggest problem I'm having here is that the, all these components seem to be more or less proprietary. Um, at least from my research. Okay, so these are little driver chips with a big old beefy heat sink on top of them. Looks like there's, looks like these are receivers for like other things that you could plug into it. So maybe this, this can't be an off the shelf board because it's a special shape. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, and this is, I mean, we're out shooting in the dark with this thing because there's just no information about these things whatsoever. There's a little bit of information about the the successor to this, the, um, the MA5, but there's not a lot of information on the MA4. Um, I think it's because they only made so many of them. They only made, I don't know, 
This is serial number 409, so they couldn't have made that many of them. Unless this just happens to be a low serial number. What do you know? It's all ABS, uh, well, polycarbonate and ABS. Uh, well, that's what we know so far. So, not a lot of insight so far other than, you know, it runs an Intel processor. It has uh, probably 32 megs of onboard RAM and an expansion of another 32 megs. Uh, so very underpowered little computer by modern standards. And so, I mean, if we want to get crisis running on this thing, <laughs> we might need to do a little bit better. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit. I'm going to kind of noodle on this and see what needs to be done. And uh, in the meantime, social media is over here. Uh, subscribe down here. Here is the rest of the playlist. See this whole process start to finish, or it could be a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy anyway. Uh, down here is the newsletter. Sign up for that and let you know all the cool stuff that's going on around the shop. In the meantime, my name is Atari, and until next time, tally-ho, y'all.